Hello and welcome to Focus on Liberia. My name is Dennis Jart and we are broadcasting from Atlanta, Georgia. Tonight, our guest, uh, our topic is Liberian communities around the world. And uh, we are focusing tonight on Ukraine and Sweden. Again, welcome to Focus on Liberia and we'll be back shortly. Again, welcome to Focus on Liberia. My guest tonight, I'm uh, from the Ukraine, as Prince Newland. Prince, welcome to Focus on Liberia. Thank you very much, sir. It's a, it's a pleasure. And uh, representing the Labyrinth community from Sweden, I have my man, Francis Mensa. Francis, welcome to Focus on Liberia. Thank you, Dennis. It's an honor to be on the PM your show this, this night. All right. And we are, uh, last week we started a series on Liberian communities around the world. We uh, spoke with the representative from the UK and also from Canada tonight. We are focusing on the Liberian community in Ukraine and also in Sweden. I have uh, Prince Newland. Prince yes, is right there in Sweden. We stayed, uh, we stayed in state, Prince. Uh, I'm, in, I'm in Ukraine, Tanopil. Say, say that again. I'm in Ukraine, Tanopil. Tanopil. Yes, All sir. Right. Where, where are you, uh, Francis? Yeah, I'm in Stockholm, Stock Stockholm, Sweden, the capital of Stockholm. Sweden. Who would have thought that we have librarians all over the world? <laughs> and, and that's that's really the uh, the whole point of the entire series. We want to connect as librarians around the world. So, you know. As a result of the war and other factors, we have librarians throughout the the, uh, the globe, and so let's get to know one another. How is it there in Ukraine, uh, Prince? Well, Ukraine Ukraine is okay for now. We are in summer, so everything is going fine. It's just great. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. We uh, I want you to uh, you know have fun tonight. Enjoy the night. Let us just connect as librarians. We have people watching normally across the uh, world, you know, in every part of the world. So we just want to connect and see uh, how our colleagues are doing in other parts of the of the uh, of the globe. Oh, okay. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Mensa, and by way of full disclosure, <laughs> I have known uh, Francis for. I, I don't want to call our our age, so I wouldn't call how long I've been knowing you, but we're <laughs> classmates. We are uh, graduated from the same high school in Liberia. Francis, wow. one thing, I, I didn't even know it was you until I saw your bio. <laughs> <laughs> I saw the, you know, we call you Francis Mensa. Now there was a long name, Francis Ajivo Momo. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought that was funny. Yeah, I know that, Dennis. I mean, oh man, we, we, we come a long way, uh, I know, uh, since high school days. Uh, we got uh, some peculiar stories we cannot we cannot lay out in the public domain, but uh, uh, we have come along. I know uh, I have known Mr. Ja for for quite a, a while now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and Prince, you know, Ukraine. You know, I have a blog, and Prince, there's something that I noticed. So on my blog, sometimes when I check, I see people watching, people or visiting my blog from Ukraine. I really used to dismiss it because I didn't know that we are librarians in Ukraine. I said, well, maybe some Ukrainians just, just, just went there and checked. 
Yeah. No, no, we do. We do have Liberians here. Um, maybe if not up to 100, maybe around at least a maximum the whole of the crew, maybe might, might be up to 50 people or more or more. I'm just estimating, but we have Liberians here now. There are more Liberians in this place. And I was looking up Ukraine. I saw that um, actually this country had been in existing like uh, something like 32,000 BC. Yeah, uh, yeah, was, yeah. It's of a course. whole country. Yeah, so, sometime when I'm like talking to some people back home, they are like, where, where are you? I'm like, Ukraine. Where is Ukraine? I'm like, come on, Ukraine is in Europe. Come on, guys. <laughs> Yeah, you know, no, that, that's, a, that's a question that I, that I get. You know, Ukraine is in Europe. So basically, you know, what are some of the borders countries there in Ukraine? I know this part of the former Soviet Union. Yeah, you have, you have Russia, you have Slovakia, you have Romania, you have the Black Sea, like I'm in the sea, and then yeah, there are a few other countries, Belarus, they are all surrounding Ukraine. Oh, oh, oh wow. So they call the people what Ukrainians or how they call them? Yeah, they are you are Ukrainian. They are Ukrainians. Like um, the most interesting thing is if you are doing a the language, there are specific way they allow you to call them. Uh, Ukraina, Ukrainski. Just like that's how that's how you call their their name because the the, the language here they have um, the pronunciation matters in Ukrainian language. All right, and then my man Francis from the uh, Scandinavian countries. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, in terms of uh, Liberians in Sweden, uh, we have Liberians in the neighborhood, I mean, uh, probably around two, two to 3,000 Liberians, uh, yeah, uh, who have been okay. resettled in uh, Sweden wow. and those who came here from the Lanco era. Yeah, in, oh, yeah. 45,000 uh, Swedes working with Lanco. JV, JV, uh, in JVC in the became an end in my counties. Okay. Well, uh, that, that was our um, kind of around the cool up moment. We will say again, welcome to our Focus on Liberia to our viewers across the globe. This is Focus on Liberia. My name is Dennis Jai. I want to welcome all of you to our brand new series, Liberian Communities Around the World. Uh, last week, we, we spoke to Liberians in uh, the UK and also in Canada. This week, we are focusing the Ukraine and also Sweden. With me from Ukraine, representing the Liberian communities in Ukraine is Prince Newland. Prince is a, is a young man, 26 years old. He's, a, he's now working, he's in school. He's studying computer science on the bachelor's level. And as he said, he's from this place called Tanapil, the National Technical University, or uh, the Tanapil National Technical University, Ukraine. That's where you attend, Prince. Yes, and, sir. Uh, you, you are from uh, Liberia, of course. You have uh, two sisters. And, uh, and your elder sister is a pastor. You yes, yourself, sir. I see you on Facebook preaching sometime. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. And uh, your father is Abraham. He got an advanced printing press that is on Benson and Clay Street. Yes, sir. Well, Gwendolyn is also right there in Morovia and is a business person. Again, I say, welcome to Focus on Liberia. Thank you, sir. Okay. And also from you, uh, Sweden, that's uh, the president of the Liberian community there, Mr. Francis Achibo Mono Mensa. Mr. Mensa, uh, he's, uh, he's, getting, he's getting up there. He's, he's an... <laughs> He's not as young as I said previously. We both graduated from uh, Moravia College the same year, 1988. He hailed from uh, Maryland County. He grew up in Gardnersville, Monrovia. He attended the St. Michael Catholic High School before going on to Moravia College, where he graduated. He has a bachelor's in economics from the EME Zion University. Uh, he also has a master's in industrial management from the University of Gothenburg in Sweden. Mr. Mensa is married with four children, and presently he's the uh, president and uh, of uh, the Labrin Swedish Association. That's uh, the Labrin organization in Sweden. He's the owner and proprietor of Mono Trading Company in Sweden. Mr. Mensa, again, welcome to Focus on Liberia. Thank you, Comrade John. All right, let's start with you, Mr. Mensa. How did you get in Sweden, and how most of these people uh, get there in Sweden? 
Well, for me, on a personal note, uh, I came to Sweden around 2001, uh, 2002, uh, to visit my sister. My, uh, my mother was, uh, was actually married to a Swede. Uh, so uh, I, came to I came to see her after so many years. And, uh, and then the war broke out. I think World War One, in Liberia, they called it, broke out, and then uh, I had the option to stay. But initially, if I wanted to come to Sweden, I would have done it a long time. But you no, know, all Liberians, I would focus was to go to America. Yeah, you know, America. You know, so that was our that where we knew. Right. And then, uh, so uh, I found myself here, and uh, I've got adjusted. I got I got you related to the society, and I live here now. So uh, it's. All is well by the grace of God. So, mm -hmm. okay. So, 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 how the how the community there in Sweden? Well, we have a very vibrant community there in Sweden. Uh, as I stated earlier, uh, most Liberians came here uh, after they got repatriated by the UN. Uh, they were spread across this Scandinavia, but Sweden took a lot of them as well as uh, uh, Finland and you know, other countries within the Scandinavia region. Uh, so today we have uh, in the neighborhood of probably three to 4,000 Liberians here, or probably even more. Okay. So uh, we have a, a considerable number of Liberians here and the community is very cohesive. Uh, uh, we just yesterday we celebrated our Independence Day uh, in Gothenburg. Uh, there was a huge turnout; it was massive. And uh, next weekend, we uh, uh, a week uh, or two a week or two from here, we have we we'll be celebrating our Judah, uh, the August twenty fourth. So this has been mm. an annual event. So our librarians are you know I would are here uh, doing well along with I uh, know our brothers from Sweden who have lived in Liberia as well. Okay. So, from, from Lamco. From Lamco era, yeah. That is the Scandinavian country. Which country make up that? What are some of the border areas there in Sweden, if I can pick Well, up? in terms of Scandinavia, uh, Scandinavia consists of very, very three countries. Uh, Sweden, Denmark, and Norway. Uh, unofficially, Finland is, has been you know, considered as you know, a Scandinavia country, but it's, you know, but uh, it's basically the three countries, Sweden, Norway, Denmark, and we, you know, yeah. And, and let me come to you, uh, uh, Prince. How, how did you get, I know you are studying, you are studying in uh, Ukraine. How did you get there and how most librarians find their way right there in Ukraine? Um, usually, usually um, most librarian here they are studying. As like likewise as me, we are all studying. I got here through a friend who we went to Lokiri together, high school together. So like when he came out to Ukraine, and then he was like, "This place is very cheap. You can study here. It's okay." And then he actually encouraged me. So that was how I began my process to come out to Ukraine. So many many uh, librarians are still here. Mm, most of them they are students. Most of the librarians are here. Oh, okay. And, and what's, what's the area where do most librarians live in Ukraine? Yeah, like um, most librarians live in my state, uh, Tanopil. Tanopil have, recently we have more than close to 30 persons in my state. So most librarians are in my state, Tanopil. And most of them are, are students, you said? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Most of them are students. There is an association there. You say the Librarian Student Association. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There is, there is the Librarian Student Association. They are, they are active. They are functioning. Um, the president is J. Vinton Holder. He's, he's doing his master now. Um, so, like we recently they celebrated, we celebrated the, the 26th, uh, July 26th. We had two parents from Liberia joining us to grace the occasion, and we had a nice time. So there is. Okay. And you, you went there for school, and what are some of the courses uh, you are studying or computer? I'm studying computer science. Uh, what are some yeah. of the areas the, the other librarians are, are in? Like, like quite recently, we, we have quite recently, two doctors left from this place. They, they graduated, uh, two girls. They went back to Liberia. Um, and mostly, mostly we, have, we have librarians in, in the Economic University. We have them in medical. 
uh, we have them in technical, but like mostly you'll find librarians in the medical and the technical university. Mm, okay, that, 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 that's, that's good. So most of the librarians there, they are, have students. Are they, you know, being sponsored by government or any group or are they just self-supported? Not to my knowledge, they are, they are self-supported. Oh, oh, okay, so. You guys should be should be should be having a lot of money to take care of yourself over there. <laughs> basically, basically, um, Ukraine is not that expensive to study. As I said earlier, on. Ukraine is not that expensive to study. Actually, I actually came with with some breakdown of some of the school fees and some of the universities. Like, okay. I, I did some research on them and like I bought some figure that mm -hmm. I would like to show you guys just in case someone watching they want to know like mm -hmm. how much. That, so um, for the for the economic university, um, there is uh, they have uh, international economics. Uh, it's in English, and it's uh, it's around one thousand nine hundred and ninety nine dollars for, for a year. For the whole year. Yes, no, yes. No, no, no. I, I think we got to come back to this later. Please hold yes. it, hold your statistics. Okay, the no problem. University for whole year is less than two thousand dollars. You telling me? Yeah, like, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It depends on courses, but like mostly. Um, Mostly this, the, the, the estimate I see here, uh, there is nothing like, uh, except for the medical university, but, but most of the universities is around two, two, five, two, six, four a year. But we'll come back to that. Right, <laughs> Let, let's come back to that. <laughs> let's come back to that. Uh, 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 Francis, what are some of the areas where you have your biggest librarian concentration in Sweden? Well, in terms of uh, the demographics of librarians, uh, we, well, librarians were settled in the north. I would pretty say I would, it's easier to have it by region. Okay. So when the first batch of librarians came, they were, settled, they were resettled in the north. And that is uh, probably, probably close towards the Finnish border and stuff like that. Uh, and, and there was also, because those is communities. But when you absorb uh, refugees, the, the, the communities, uh, the municipality has to support these people. Right. So, so those uh, municipalities that are in the north, I mean, they, they, I mean, they are more open or welcoming. Right. So I know there's a social status here. So, uh, so the Liberians, but they have, they were basically concentrated in the north. But now we have an influx of them. You know, everybody trying to seek job and better opportunities. So they. The, the demographic is shifting towards Stockholm now. So we have you no know, like a solitary community and uh, uh match that where you know, there's a huge librarian concentrated. Oh, oh, oh. And what is the uh, the demographic? Do you find more young people, old people, people your age? Where 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 do we have you know the most librarians are around which age group in, in that well it's at, if it, uh, in terms of that uh, we will probably say with with average between 25 to 60, 65. Yeah. Yeah, that includes uh, people who have lived here for for you know for a while since mm -hmm. the seventies, some came to study and then with the recent influx of people. Uh, then those people had children, so uh I don't know if we consider Liberians or Swedes. Mm -hmm. So but man, uh, we all consider Liberians, so that's uh, mm -hmm. that's another 25 percent of young people okay yeah so tell me tell me about your organization what was the history of the uh, librarian swedish organization there i know you've been president for some time now yeah uh, i took all the leadership in uh, 2005 i assume yeah um oh, the intent of the organization is to seek and foster unity amongst librarians uh and actually to uh, give back to our communities, as, especially to Liberia, where we come from. Um, we have a membership of that constitute all Liberians, but you know, as you know, Liberians, we have few active people. Uh, we have probably 10 persons that actually come to meetings, you know, but we have 3,000 people come to parties. Right. Same story everywhere. <laughs> yeah, you know, so uh, basically that's what our drives are. We have had series of uh, engagement in Morovia 
uh, we have some uh, relief activities going on, humanitarian activities. We donated a couple of assorted items and medical uh, uh, equipment to hospitals, especially specifically to the Jefferson Hospital. Uh, we had a, a scholarship or no fund drive that is being initiated. We uh, have it ongoing. The Duja, the Duja Community College, and the Duja High School. We we have I don't know. Those are some of the, the uh, activity projects that we are undertaking in Morovia, especially like I mean, specifically in Morovia, Liberia, mm -hmm. be specific. Right. I'm I'm personally uh, connected to the uh, to the family that started the Duja School, and uh, so that's one of the uh, group that uh, the community support. That's 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 very good because Duja is is doing very well in in, in Liberia. Yeah. Okay. All that's right. Good. So uh, already I start having questions uh, coming from uh, someone said you've been president since 2005. Wow, what's the story? Oh well, uh, it, it's quite intriguing. Uh, I know. Before before I assumed the leadership, we we have uh, Miss um, Maggie Kofa. I think you know. I mean, I mean, this is your family. I think you be related or something. Right, I know the Kofa family, right? <laughs> yeah, she she held the presidency. Then uh, we have Mr. James Barty, uh, and then another 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 fellow called by the name of Gati Yeke. And uh, you know, it just based upon my personal engagement with the community of. Uh, People repose the confidence in me that uh, I should always continue. Uh, every time it was for an election, I know about what turned up. Mm -hmm. uh, but this time mm -hmm. we have an election. So uh, I mean, I, 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 I threw in the, you know, the tower, like the, okay. when you need to have a new group of poor on board, we mm -hmm. need to have you no know, new ideas, younger people, more innovative people to come about to move the, the organization forward. So uh, it has always been like that. So, uh, so just just a, just a short story because right. nobody will take it over at a time. Oh, okay, thank you. Yeah. Because you are from Maryland, so I was afraid that uh, maybe you you were coming to do the third mountain over there again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, no, 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 no. Mr. Uh, Prince, uh, yes, Thomas Awaji is saying that uh, in the in around Ukraine, the people are racist. So how are librarians treated over there? Yeah, that, that, that's one of the reasons why the um, Liberian Student Union uh, was established because like there are some Liberians who have been um, basically mistreated. So the organization purpose is to protect Liberians that are in Ukraine and watch over them for everything they do. Um, for racism, really, uh, I, as I always say, for me, I encounter them like maybe two times, but since then, almost the past four years I've been here, I've not really come in contact with a real serious racism or attack on me though. But yeah, there's, there have been some cases where in Liberians have been, uh, have been mocked or something like that. But the organization is also there we're trying our possible best to make sure what I think so far is so good. I think we got a lawyer that try to defend Liberians whenever they are in, whenever they are in cases like this. So, so what are some of the, uh, what are some of the instances? I know it's not, is it is it something organized? Is it from the government? Is it from uh, just regular people? Is it from the police? Is it from you know immigration officers? What are some of the treatment? Uh, give me some examples. Um, like like for example, if, if, if a librarian is, is, is involved maybe in school issue or maybe someone assault him, um, the organization will take full responsibility of taking the the, the, the tax to court and trying to see how best the tax can be resolved. Basically, 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 the organization is, is, is somehow new. We are like maybe or two years old now. Since. So, so some, some of these things, when, when we have to do a student where in you are, we don't have uh, financial backing from our country. So we all have to rally, rally around to see what we can have and to support one another. That's basically, that's it. Okay. So now you, you find yourself in Ukraine and most of you, you say you are self-supported or your family from back home trying to, uh, to, to help. Yes, sir. So sometime if you don't, sometimes I know you, you don't you don't have it. So what else do you do? What what are librarians doing in case you know you meet hardship like that? 
you, usually yeah, um, for my city, um, people, uh, it's, it's not easy. Like there is no much work for Liberian here uh, or being straight. And if there is a work, the language barrier is one of the main problems because European language is not just easy. It's very difficult though. Um, but mostly some of us that bring that I know, some of them, they move to the capital city because there people speak at least a bit of English. So some of them work there. So the school you go to, the, the school is in English. How do you, do you speak the language and how do you get around and things like that? Yeah, yeah. Basically, I, I know, so I know the basic, the basic language communication to make my way around. But my, my course is actually an English language. I got English teacher. Okay, so you can speak a little bit of you, you, Ukraine? Yeah, Ukrainian, Ukrainian language. Ukrainian language, so. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like it's come over. What does that mean? I mean, Ukrainian language is the same. Oh, okay, so basically, so you are able to like go in the market and- uh, Yeah, so like, like, like when I came here, I knew my, my challenge was to know the numbers because like, like like three star three star is like it's like hundred uh, three hundred three hundred grievances, but they, they use grievances here, yeah. like Odin, Diva, Tred, Chotere. These are all the numbers I'm calling, but it's in Ukrainian language. No, <laughs> I know my man Francis. You can speak uh, the Swedish language now. Well, I can get my I can get myself around. I mean, I can you know get my point across. I mean, fluently. Uh, well, it left with it left with who I'm speaking with to judge me on that, but. Sure, yeah. I can get. But, but you, went, you went to school there, and it's in English as well. Yeah, I mean English. Yeah, international programs are all in English. Yeah, oh, I mean, do class when, teach. When you getting around, going to buy something, supermarket, you you speak the the local, you speak the language. Yeah, I speak the language. Uh, but it's quite interesting that uh, people tend to, to you know, when you open your mouth to speak the language, they understand you. They know they. Uh, uh, the, 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 I mean, you, you have that strong African accent. So, I mean, some people that call you off and ask you in English, I'm like, no, but, mm. but I mean, I can speak your language and uh, it, it's important. It's one of, one of your uh, priorities when you come here to learn the language because uh, in terms of employment, you, uh, you need to speak the language uh, because it can be used against you in so many ways to get you uh, uh, rejected. So I mean, it was an important factor, important component of your stay in the country. So how do you say hello? My name is Francis, and welcome to Focus on Liberia. I mean, you want to put a laugh at me on the program? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so easy, man. Okay. Hey, uh, you had to Francis. I recommend recommend to focus on Liberia. All right, all right. Thank you. Let me see if you are just joining us. This is Focus on Liberia. We are discussing Liberian communities around the globe. We, tonight, we have Mr. Prince Newland from Ukraine. He's representing the Liberian Student Association in Ukraine, where you have about 100 or so Liberians studying in at various University. From uh, Sweden, we have uh, Francis Mensa. He's the president of the Liberian Swedish Association. He's also joining us all the way from Stockholm, Sweden. Uh, now, I know every community has its own challenges. Uh, Francis, let me start with you. What are some of the challenges your community faces? And um, what are some of your success stories? Well, uh, in terms of challenges, uh, uh, the African community or the specific Liberian community. Liberian community. Uh, you, Liberian can, community. You, can, you can share on the African community as well. Oh, uh, I mean, I mean, the, the, the most, uh, a parent challenge is the language, uh, as, and again, again for the employer, you know, uh, people. This the, the system is so is it is is structured isn't is structured on a social basis where you have a, a, a subsidy from the government and help you to live, you know, a welfare as you call it in America, mm -hmm. yeah, and uh, so. Uh, I, Employment is one is one of the serious challenges that Africans, uh, Liberians, do encounter because uh, uh, they're not so kind in terms of giving you the right jobs, opportunity, your education, whatever it is. Uh, you gotta be very lucky to have you, you know, uh, land in a good job, 
you know, so uh, basically about people are quite content with what to do and they, they're able to pay their bills and survive. Uh, uh, in terms of our success as the community, uh, we, uh, we have managed to bring the communities together because we have local chapters around in uh, you know, the, uh, the three major cities, Gothenburg, Malmo, and Stockholm. So uh, we were very instrumental in bringing those communities, a new group of librarians together to form themselves. And we have uh, young and vibrant leaders in the communities. Abraham Sandy is a very innovative and committed young man. He's strong. Uh, he, has a, he has strong leadership, maybe he has strong character. I uh, have Mr. Seton Hill from Gothenburg, who's also a strong a young man, dedicated, ambitious young man. Uh, so he, they all managed to, to bring the community together. And we have this one, we have this umbrella organization, which I am the, the national president. And so we have, we, as I said, we have sent a lot of things to Liberia in terms of uh, giving back to our community back home and you know, helping our people. Or go through some of the problems, alleviate some of the basic uh, health problems we're having in Liberia. So, so basically, <laughs> most Liberians are, are now working their own. You know, they're getting help from the government. Yes, they do. They do have. They do. They do. Uh, yeah. So yeah, for but, those, uh, where, but, where, where do they work? What are the kind of things that they do? Oh, uh, the major, the major source of employment is uh, uh, in for Liberians here. Oh. Uh, uh, in the health sector, okay. uh, in, in the service management sector, uh, facility management sector, where you know to do the, the jobs, you know. So basically, the health sector and the facility management uh, 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 industries are where to to, to work. Or few of few often ourselves in uh, uh, you know the banking sector, business aspect, and so. But on, on the aggregate, on holistically, librarians found us to work in the two industry, the health sector and the uh, uh, no, facility management sector, Hosp yeah. hospi yeah. hospitality, the hotels, and I uh, you know, yeah. Okay. So Prince, you, you are in Ukraine to study. So let's talk a little bit more about, about schools, okay? Mm -hmm. um, let's again get me an idea because I'm here let, let's start with the, the quality of the of the of this of the school system. You know, I know there are some who are graduating and, and going back. What are you hearing from those graduating from Ukraine going back and probably getting employed or getting the workforce? Um, <clears throat> most of the people that go back home, usually most of them, some of them don't go back home actually, some of them goes to different countries around. Like it, I only know just recently to this uh this gone this one year I learned that a friend of mine who graduated with doctorate degree she went back home but all of a sudden we have not I've not really spoken with her asking her if if like she's employed or how is everything back home mm. but for that I don't have much idea only. Okay, so so uh, for 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 the students I know you are let, let's go to the cost, how oh, much okay. it cost? Yeah, give me some ideas of uh, some of the programs. Some of their costs, the name of the university. I researched some of them. They are pretty good universities, some prestigious university around uh, right there in Ukraine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of living, going to a university, staying on a dormitory, or renting your own place. Give me some ideas. Okay. Um, I'm going to give you right now some information from, like, for example, the very university that, that are in my state, Tanopil, okay. not, not of Ukraine, okay? So um, basically, everything I will be saying, all of these lang all of these uh, courses are in English language. Okay. okay. Um, for example, I'll begin with the economic university. Uh, we have international economics, which is one thousand nine hundred and ninety nine dollars for a year. Yeah. And then within that same university, you have uh, international law, that is two thousand for a year. And then in the same university, you have computer science, which is uh, one thousand nine hundred eighty five US. Um, for a year. So you can search it up on, on this website, which is www.tneu.edu.ua. You can find some information pertaining to that. Let's say that again, www.tneu.edu.ua. Www. Www. Okay. 
edu dot ua okay all right then we move forward to the medical university so for the medical we have dentistry which is um 4200 us for a year and then and then a medicine which is um doctorate doctorate degree that is 3600 us for a year for a medical degree 3600 yeah. a year yeah 3600 us that's that's what i get okay for, yeah from the medical university and then um, for my own personal university, which is the uh, Tanopil uh, Technical Medical, I mean Tanopil Medical, uh, Tanopil University, Technical University, we have um, we have building, building and civil engineering, we have computer science, we have computer engineering, we have management, and this for this one uh, is is very in year. For example, the first academic year you will be like two thousand for any of these courses. Any of these one I just need, including engineering. You pay two thousand for the whole year. Yeah. For the first year, for the, for the first year, you pay two thousand. Second academic year, the next year you pay two thousand two two thousand two hundred for a year, and the third you pay two thousand four hundred, and the last, which is the fourth year, you pay two thousand six hundred. Then you get for, a four year bachelor degree in engineering. Yes. For any one of them, for engineering, for building and, and civil engineering, for computer science, for computer engineering, for management, and so on. That is it. Okay. What, what does that entail? Or, or that doesn't include books and boarding? No, that's just a school fees. All right. So for if you want to stay on the hostel, on the dormitory, for a year, how much would that be? Um, maybe you must spend not, maybe not less than close to three or four hundred. Three zero zero. Yeah, three hundred. Three hundred dollars to stay on a university campus. For a year. For a year. Then let's say you have to take care of yourself to buy food, toiletries, and other. How much would that cost you? Well, uh, it depends on the lifestyle you want to live. Okay. Basic lifestyle, like my lifestyle, I'm I'm, I'm cheap. <laughs> okay, basic 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 lifestyle for a year. Really, I I think you might. You might need like even 250 or 250 can take you if only you know how to manage yourself very well. 250 dollars. Yeah, 250. So, so, so I'm I'm paying I'm paying 2,600 for for school fees. Yeah. I'm paying 250 dollars to buy my food, uh, yeah. supplies, everything, and mm -hmm. I'm paying like uh, you say to stay on the university campus. I'm paying like uh, 300 to 400 dollars. Yeah, but it, it, it's very known for, for, for different university. For example, yeah. my university is that first, but it's very for different university. Okay. No, that, that's a, and it's, it's very important to know because, uh, as I said at the beginning of our first series, is uh, maybe some of us think the world revolves around the US, but there are you know, other places around the world and there are some quality education being you know, given. But, uh, Francis, what's your experience with uh, universities in, in Sweden? cost-wise and everything else? Well, uh, when I came to Sweden uh, like, well, a couple of years ago, a decade or so ago, uh, schools schools were basically cheap. I mean, it was free, free education. Uh, because they had this scholarship program for specific countries uh, that were considered to you know, to be on that program, uh, but uh, in the in the last five years or so, we had an influx of people coming. You know, Americans as well. Uh, you no, know, I have I have schoolmates, coursemates from America. The Chinese, the major, they are major benefactors. They have to come here all the time. So the school fee has increased. So, uh, if you want for a semester or term, you pay you probably pay pretty close to ten thousand dollars for a term now. Uh, yeah. But Europeans, European citizens, people from who, who who has European citizenship, they, they I mean they have free education. Yeah, but if outside of Europe, outside of Europe, you have to pay. But the exception, the exception for a few African countries like Cameroon. I have a couple, I have a couple of students, a couple of friends from Cameroon and Nigeria, Ghana. I don't know why Liberia is not a uh, uh, no part of that uh, group. You know, so, but basically to study in Sweden as a foreigner, you have to, 
if you have to be talking about 10K or so, 10,000, 20,000. For, for a year or a semester? Yeah, yes. Oh, all right. Yeah, that's a. But, and you are saying if you are a European citizen, that's free for college education? Yeah, it is. I mean, this, uh, yeah, and that's European. And, I mean, now they have, they're trying to strangle the process. They have trying to streamline, they have more criteria. So it, quite, it might be quite a difficult right now for people to come in because uh, the education is, is, is of high quality. Uh, now, my high school I went to it has a sister relationship. The professors go back and forth between CITOM, uh, or we call it Stanford in California, and and my university. So they, they, they most of them, you know, they, they have courses and lecture series at you no know, Stanford and universities in America. Oh. So yeah, so basically, it's quite expensive for yeah. for non European yeah. or non sweet I can say. So, yeah. but, but if you can if you can take on the Swedish citizenship, then it gets easier. Yeah, it's free. Oh, then it's free. It's free. You don't pay a dime. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. That's good. Uh, uh, there's a question uh, for you or Prince Thomas Awagi say, how are the school fees being paid? You know, I, 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 is anyone on scholarship, I guess, is asking, how mm -hmm. are their families in Liberia able to help them? Okay, um, usually, usually just by way of Western Union, like they send transfer to you. But some people, for example, do have like Echo Bank card, like uh, Visa card do work here. So some people deposit the money in their account and they withdraw it to the ATM. So what are some of the banks that are, that are, let's say I'm in America and want to, or in Sweden and want to support students in, uh, in, in Ukraine, how do I pay? First of all, you you will have to contact the university and let them know. Then they they will they, they will tell you which bank you will have to send money to. Because oh, then you can do it through through the bank. So yeah. so now, uh, uh, I understand Liberia does not have a diplomatic relation uh, with uh, Ukraine. No. So we don't have a Ukrainian embassy in, in, in Liberia. How so? How did you get to uh, Ukraine? Oh, okay. Um, I think most I mean, most countries move to uh, what's the thing? Uh, most country, I mean, most everyone that from Liberia usually goes to Senegal to to get to get visa. That's the only place. Like uh, once you are trying to get a visa from West Africa, they will send you to Senegal. That's where I got my visa from Senegal. Oh, oh okay. And what is the process? You know, if if other people, other Liberians watching you tonight and want to come to Ukraine. To go to school, um, what would be the process? First of all, uh, if you want to study here, you you would need an invitation from the university inviting you to study, and then on the invitation will be written the course that you want to study. Uh, but I think one of, one of the things I want to make very clear, um, you have to have a trusted person that you can trust because some some um, some there are some there have been some cases where in the, some library have been exploited by some agents. Old, when it comes here, they take more money from them than they require money. So first of all, you have to have a trusted person, somebody who you can trust, okay? And basically, when you get the invitation, the invitation will be sent back to you wherever you are, maybe in Liberia or so. And then you have to travel to Senegal. That's where they do your process. But Senegal, there, there are a lot of um, requirements, like school, high school document. You have to do, do, notarize some of them. So it's a series of process, and it takes time. Like, usually in Senegal, the visa takes you 15 days to get it. Okay, there's a question for you, uh, uh, Francis, about Swedish citizenship. How, uh, Dave Jai saying, what will it take to gain Swedish citizenship and do they support dual citizenship? Yeah, yes. Uh, uh, in first, uh, the Swedish citizenship, yeah, uh, it's easy. Uh, I think they have the maximum period from the day you have your residence. I mean, you call it green card in America, or whatever it is, to five years. Uh, depending upon your record, your track record, if you have any problem with the law, that it might prolong your, you know, your access to get to having uh, to the citizenship. Uh, in terms of dual citizenship, yes, uh, there are a lot of people, Swedes, who have. Uh, uh, a lot of 
nationalities who have citizenship in other countries, like America, or, you know, and the UK. So uh, I think it's quite tricky in terms of uh, how one goes about obtaining pseudo citizenship. I uh, know, as I stated, uh, you live with an individual. I mean, you can get married. It's, it's the one easier way. One, and then another way, another another avenue is that when you have the, your, your residence permit, become a president, a permanent resident, and you, if, you, if you clean with the law, you're not in any shady business, you know, having no, uh, you know, dirty track record, then uh, five years, hey, you, you obtain your citizenship. Okay. So, so uh, I know uh, librarians, wherever we are, we don't forget our culture, our food, our music, and everything else. Uh, how, how is it there? I understand there are some Lone Star players. And so, how does our culture mm -hmm. look like? Are we still uh, doing our um, kala, pepper kala, fufu, mm -hmm. dancing, our music, and all this stuff? Oh, how, yeah, how, man. Yeah, that's the thing going on. You go to the librarian parties, don't play librarian songs. I mean, the poor said the party was not good. I don't care. You see them dancing, dripping over sweat. Once you don't play librarian song, they say the party was not good. They did. So, I mean, that one thing we do not forget, uh, uh, especially folks who have come, who, who came here, you know, in a, you know, much more mature. So, I mean, you tend to uh, bring your culture, you know, with you. Uh, in, in your food, your lifestyle. I mean, no, no. When especially for Liberians, uh, we tend to actually network with more Liberians. We interact with Liberians on, I know, I know, based on a daily basis. So, if you go to a Liberian house, a typical Liberian house, I mean, you find a uh, rice, a uh, you no, know, uh, you know, cassava leaf, and uh, whatever. My mother, the you know, is most more and. and but total greens, we call it spinach, you know, but it's cooked in the labyrinth, we cook labyrinth way. Mm -hmm. You know, some heavy pepper, my man, so that's it. Oh, yeah, man, you tell me about it. So, <laughs> you know, uh, someone is saying, uh, uh, Thomas is saying, people, if you have family in Liberia supporting you in Ukraine, that means your family must be doing well. <laughs> is, is that the case? <laughs> you know, um, be okay, before, like, if I, I get into that, I want to clarify something. The information on the school fees, right? Uh, like for my time when I came to Ukraine, um, I, I had to pay around two thousand and three hundred, around that. So this, this is a recent update on the school fees. All right. Okay. So for, yeah, for some of us, we we don't have a, a, a contract signed with them at with the university at the time we came. It was around two thousand three hundred, two thousand five hundred. Our contract still stand, but those who will be coming to Ukraine. Maybe within this time, this, this is the fair. This is what they will pay. Okay. Is it higher or lower? Huh? Is it higher or lower? No, it's lower. It's actually lower. I think it's, it's a bit lower. Okay. Now, yeah. I don't know why, but it's a bit lower. But for my time, we had with some contract university, we pay around 2000 For computer science, my time, I pay around 2300 and I'm still paying $2,300, 2400 $2,300 in average. Because it depends on the rate, though. Right. So is mm -hmm. your family, I, mean, I don't want to be personal, but is your family doing well? Is that why? Or is well, it some? No, it's, it's like if, if you have your child and you want the best for them, right. you go to extreme to, to support them. So it's not about doing well, not doing well. It's all, it's all about putting your child education or your child future first. Right. Whatever is. Uh... OK. My. Uh... There's a comment here on Facebook. I want to read all of it from uh, Benjamin Va Kelly. Benjamin mm -hmm. is saying he's uh, in support of dual citizenship for Liberia. The fact is Liberia has a lot to gain once those mechanisms have been put in place. The key is empowerment. We should be looking at creating jobs, opportunity for the youth instead of being afraid. So, uh, Prince, you are, you are, you are over there. Do you see more Liberians, you know, after they've been educated, you know, do they want to stay there and work or do you, do you see them wanting to go back home, especially for you? What do you intend after your graduation? Really, uh, after my graduation, I want to follow my education to get a master's degree first. For me, my, my, my dream and my vision is to make Liberia better. If we all stay in Europe, Liberia will not get better. 
mm. that brought Leos. So for me, I'm, I'm thinking of going back home to help my country. But God's waiting, okay? But most often, most of my friends that I talk to here, they will always say they don't want to go back home. They want to go somewhere else to make life and then go back to like where they don't. And what are they saying are some of the conditions that will make them to return? Like... Like, like some, some of them, most some of them that are in the medical field, they are like they spend no money to gain education when they get back home. Before they get a job, they will have to push around, beat the system, go around trying to grab some, do some bribing and other stuff. So that, that is actually frustrating for them. Mm -hmm. Right. Maybe, I mean, the reason I'm really asking these education questions is because we in uh, America, we pay a whole lot for, for school. Okay. Mm -hmm. that, you can't afford it, you have to take loans. And after you graduate, you cannot get the kind of job that will make you pay back your student loan. So if 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 uh, going to a university is less than 3,000 to get an engineering or medical degree, I mean, this is something that you you can't you can't beat it, you know. So let's say right now we have people that say, oh, school fee is cheap of my organization can sponsor at least one student for, for four years or sponsor one student for two years or stuff like that. What mm -hmm. do you think the process should look like or how do you think organizations or individuals, let's say we are on focus on librarian, somebody is watching on and that person has a deep pocket and want to help to see librarian, let's say, okay, we want uh, three graduates from uh, three high schools in Liberia to go to Ukrainian study. What do you advise on the kind of process or what can be done to make that happen? The, my, my advice, the first thing would be you have to contact the Librarian Student Association okay. to, to get the in support because like if anything, if anything happened to the person you will send there, it will be on us, okay? So the first thing you have to contact the organization, inform them about this student you want to bring over to Ukraine and then they will, they, they will tell you the next process that you, are, you need to follow to be on the safe side. Like what? Like, um, for example, if you if you contact the the the, the, the uh, Librarian Student Association, okay, and then you'd give them the information, okay, I need we want to sponsor this 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 person in this this course, okay, they will take the information to the university, and then they will request, okay, this 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 person want to sponsor them, okay, we are going to they, they, they will make the process more easier for you. That's what I'm trying to say. They'll make it more easier for you because okay. this organization is almost like a recognizing Ukraine, okay? So it'll be much easier and much better and much safer for you. Uh, I think I think it'll be best you contact the Librarian Student Association okay. or anything like that. Francis, what do you think about that? Because Ukraine is cheap, so maybe you may have your organization uh, like uh, LSA may want to sponsor at least one student there. What, yeah, what that's you think? a good idea. Uh... I mean, in terms of the costs associated with obtaining quality education, uh, is mind bubbling for the for the, 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 the amount that he just stated. So I think uh, uh, we will have. I will consult. I'm, I, for 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 your information, I uh, I am uh, stepping down as the president. Mm -hmm. So uh, I will have. I'm going to talk with other stakeholders. Right. Uh, the association probably will, will be an ideal uh, project to help you know get our kids educated, and uh, probably will have some vetting uh, system put into place yeah. to have qualified people. Probably one or two persons. I'm going for the amount. I mean, it's reasonable. Ukraine is right across there. We can probably you know work with the local organization there to see how best they can help us in the process, but. Uh, I can't guarantee anything there, but uh, right. I will put uh, your yeah, request forward and uh, see uh, how best we can move forward with, you know. With, yeah, uh, no, I mean, I was just, I was just thinking aloud, and even uh, before the show, I sent a uh, communication to I think uh, one of our ministers in Liberia. I said, well, we are going to talk to someone from Ukraine. From what I learned, school is cheap. So let's say I, I was even thinking aloud. I said, take for instance the government, the new government in Liberia wants to build all this infrastructure and all these roads, okay? So if, if we can uh, be proactive and say, oh, well, we can at least send five students to study a different form of, you know, like engineering. We have a problem of waste disposal in Liberia. You have dirt everywhere. Someone can be trained in that area. Someone on water 
you know, purifying water, those kind of things. So that by the time uh, your first term or you come to the end of your six years, you have people going back to uh, kind of do these projects that uh, people were talking about. And not just Ukraine, there are other countries where school is cheap, but the, the, the education is very solid. Yeah, I mean, just just uh, just to add into uh, to what you just said in terms of uh, capacity building, uh, Sweden have been uh, two the Swedish development agency has been very instrumental in helping the Liberian government, uh, helping our people. A lot of people have come here for training in all those areas uh, with with uh, with management. I don't know what you know. If they go back home, what do they do? Uh, do uh, are they given the opportunity to serve the country, or uh, I don't know what, but there's every other month or two, uh, there are a lot of librarians who come here, who come here to, uh, you know, to get themselves uh, properly educated, uh, you know, to enhance their capacity. Uh, just at the University of Yevle, there was uh, the Swedish uh, scholarship something, uh, uh, two or three librarians graduated the other day. And there are, a lot, there are more librarians coming come here all the time. So the problem is, is, is about using the expertise that you have, that people right. go abroad, they acquire recruit uh, skills and, and they cannot use it and they go back home. So, you know, you have people who do not have those skills op occupying the position. So mm. I think that's a mismatch mm. right there. So, I mean, it's, it's time for the government to uh, you know, take you know, due consideration in those directions to have people that are really qualified who have been trained in special, you know, areas and disciplines to to to, to, to help them to take what a job, but they can be, you know, there to help guide the process. Right, right. Uh, uh, Prince Dave Jai is asking, how is the political and military situation in Ukraine? Um, <clears throat> Yeah, uh, Ukraine. Ukraine have been uh, going through this crisis here with Russia. Uh, that is that is that is so true. But um, for the past um, three years, almost four years now, four years now, I'm not as like from where I am. I'm on the western part of Ukraine, so I have not one day experienced anything of war or anything of such. Uh, the war is in the east. They are still fighting, but it's not really as though like we're in people. I would say very serious because. For the past four years, I have lived a peaceful life here. Yeah, I have not heard anything of bones sound or anything of such like that. Okay. I mean, there's also a concern, and uh, Dave is following up, and any of you can take this up. Has we uh, touch on do this series, Liberian communities around the world? You see that uh, there's a huge number of Liberians outside the country. And and that's, that's uh, probably some brain drain is going on is this is this a concern or is this an effort for people to go back home and, and, and work you know and maybe i can start with you francis about the issue yeah. of brain dream looking at this number of librarians outside the country no uh i think it's, it's more of a, more or less an advantage for the country uh the country gain most uh in terms of that uh, yeah you know returns benefits because when people get outside the country, uh, you you learn not only academically, but you get to learn uh, a lot of social issues, social values, uh, you know, the way of life, how you see the world is not just in Morovia, it's not in America, it's just what, how people go about. Uh, in terms of uh, brain dream, uh, I don't know how many young people live in the country, but uh, the, the, the ones I know who left the country, uh, some of them have gone back and there's a problem of them, you know, being absorbed. Mm -hmm. in, when they go back home to find the requisite job, uh, fit in the right positions, you know, so uh, again, your lifestyle changes. When you leave Liberia, you come to the Western world, you come to Europe, specifically, specifically Sweden, your lifestyle change automatically. So uh, you, you, you know, if you, if you have a, a minor job, a laborer's job, you, you, you earn a probably like, you know, three to four thousand, three or uh, two, three thousand dollars. You want to go back to Liberia and I uh, say that, I mean, you know, set it down for, for $25 a month, $50 a month job. So, so yeah, I mean, it's both ways. So we, the, uh, the both, the government of Liberia, GOL has to share responsibility. 
have to you know, have incremental values in terms of uh, you know having the balance in, in you know wage education standard of living so i don't know so we're far from that but uh, we got people who want to go back home who want to give or give give it or i want to go back home I want to contribute my, my quota to society. I've, I've had, I have X amount of years in you know, supply chain management. So, I mean, what, what do I fit in? I mean, do I, I know, do I have a due process of being employed or do I have to be aligned with a particular political party? You know, so, those are factors you have to take into consideration. So, I mean, so it's not about brain dream, it's not about I'm a human nature. You want to you know, want to get it better, best for yourself, the better, you no. Know? You no know, better situation for yourself. So until then, I mean, people will always be out of the country. Mm. Some people want to go back home based upon their, their, their alliance, their political affiliation. But overall, I think uh, uh, most librarians are yearning to go back home. People within, uh, the, I mean, you know, young and old want to go back home to contribute a quota to the development of our country, Liberia. Eliza Gordon is saying when uh, these people are sent for training, they don't want to go back home to help. <laughs> Prince, what's your experience? Um, really, um, after living in Europe, like get all, the, all of the busy humanity, like you got running water, 24 hour electricity, car, like I mean, internet is stable, you know, living in this condition and going back and waiting, you'll still be in mosquito and all that, you know, just just basically, you know, help your help, your help experience, you know, stay out of stay in you getting getting to uh, learn most uh, things that you don't you, you have no idea about. Going back home, and you know that maybe the possibility of getting a job is hard. So most people prefer to stay in Europe and just continue their life there than to go back home and go back to struggling, go back to a square one, okay? So most of them, when people come to you, will just stay there and just live their life. Yeah, let uh, me just, I mean just to, to add on, if, if, uh, if I'm permitted, in, sure. when you, about the issue of uh, people coming to, uh, you know, sending people abroad to, to train, uh, and when they get trained, do not go back home. I've had experience here before. I met a couple of people, uh, you know, a couple of uh, individuals who came here for training, long-term training, and uh, in the short term, like mm -hmm. I want to, I want to stay. I said, no, no, don't waste your time, my friend. Mm -hmm. Go back home. The skills you have here, you have acquired, you, it, it's needed back home. I'm saying that to say that if you left Liberia. To come and for training for a short in a short period of time, six months or one year. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't, I'm not seeing is the is you're not going to adapt, you're not going to get yourself culturally to, to the standard of living here. But you you can always move forward. You can always go back. I mean, it's not like it's it's a quite different. It's, it, I mean, it's, it's quite different from people who live all their life here, 10, 15 years, and easily want to go back home. So I, I see it. I see it. Oh, quite funny for people. I mean, who just left like the six months, and it, you know, it, it gets so so complacent with the Western world, and they, you know, I mean, it, and I understand conditions, but I mean, I think it, it'd be fair enough to go back home, contribute, and then I mean, it's not an alternative for you to leave fine, but I think it would be fair enough for you to go back home to to contribute to your country because these countries that I mean, they 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 they, they, they are built, they benefit from our expertise. Right. Yeah. Yeah, so why can we you why we can, can why can we transfer our knowledge to our to our own country and, and, and make life better for our people? Yeah. And, and so what will it take? And I, I heard you uh you made uh, some you know suggestions or you 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 comment you commented on the, the government. What will it what? take for Iberians learning like you, like all of us here? To go back, what do we want the government or the people of Liberia to do to facilitate that return? Well, uh, I'll be honest with you. Uh, I've heard so many times that the, uh, the issue of uh, the longevity of the government, uh, the UP government came in six months was too early. Uh, the condition was not late. But I would just say like this. Uh, the government should have an enabling environment for people. Uh, mm -hmm. We need to spread out the opportunities that we have for everybody. I mean, Morovia cannot absorb everybody. I mean, you can, you government can go out and sort contracts from uh, uh, investors to 
invest in Meridian County, Lofa County. And with those investors coming, they, they, you can have Liberian, you, you have the diaspora office at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Uh, Madam Salif created a, a, that position, but it's, it's, I don't, it, the office is just there for the namesake. Uh, they do not coordinate as, to, with diaspora organizations. I mean, I, I'm the Secretary General of EFLA, the, 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 the European Federation of Liberian Associations. It's a composite of EULA. Uh, we have had serious issues with the, 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 the diaspora, uh, what do you call it? Uh, office in, in Liberia. You know, so the thing is, it's is, is all at the state of uh, political. So the government has to uh, deal with all those sentiments, political issues, and, and tend to deal with the real issue of people who want to come back home, giving them the opportunities. And I see the Chinese going to, uh, the Chinese are taking over Liberia. We have people going to schools around here. The diaspora office role is to liaise with Liberian organizations around the world. So we have in the contract building this eight, or eight kilometer rule. We might need some engineers come back home. But the Chinese are financing, yeah, but can we bring one Liberian from abroad who have steady held along with the project? That's the role of diaspora. I mean, so that's the every environment for people to go back home. Be encouraged to go back home. You know, so I mean, uh, it's just uh, it's just uh, unfortunate that uh, we find ourselves in this. The government mean well, and we have to support the government, but uh, we need the government to be very conducive for people to go back home. Uh, as our, our colleague, our former classmate Sebastian, he's, when I, I, I was monitoring this his program when he was on, uh, he spoke about when he went back to Liberia with. Uh, he had a he had a cut in his paycheck. He was making one, I think, one thousand dollars or so. And so that the sacrifices we all know we're gonna make. So we know we expect it, but that condition, so environment has to be there for you to go back home to make that one thousand. Now to go back and start hustling around. No, no. Well, what were you just say? All right, I draw dust sweet, but what you be eating? Or why? What is that? I bring. Right. So, so Prince, what, what's your take? What I mean, the. You know, when did you leave Liberia? That's quite recent. So what would it take for you to go back or for other Liberians, especially places like mm -hmm. Ukraine? Because after Ukraine, you were so comfortable with the light and the uh, amenities in the city. What will it take now for you to go back? What should the government do? Because government is a is, is, is big deal. Yeah, um, as Brother Francis just said, we had a, the, the government need to create an atmosphere where in when you go back, you know that, okay, even, even if you are not making up to what you expect, you should have the very immediate, like, it's high, you know, it's, it's high going back home. You have an expectation, okay, I'm going, I'm going to make something, but I'm, I'm going to have a family, okay? And then you going back, after all of these years, someone is telling you, okay, you are spending close to, just, just, just for example, right, you spend $2,000 just for school. Okay, a year, and then someone is telling, okay, I will give you 500. <laughs> you know, it is, it is hard. So as, 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 uh, as Brother Francis said, we, the government need to try to augment some, some things in the country, and then they need to invite some, some other experienced uh, librarians to join along with any foreign organization that will be working within the country to help make Liberia a safer place and a better place. Right, but you know now the, the famous J.F. Kennedy quote, ask now what your country can do for you. But what you can do for your country. Yeah, it's true. It's true. It's true. But bear in mind, we also have to survive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Rose, Rose Joy Kamal say they are sent out by the country with the country money. So they need to take themselves back home after getting a degree. I don't think the country sent you, but you know, that's the that's the comment from Rose. Oh, okay. Maybe maybe that's that's what she think. But um, for most most of Liberians that are here in Ukraine specifically, they are on their own. There is no country that we we are we don't get no money no any, anything from government with our own family sponsor us here. Okay. Another question from our from our from our viewers. Thomas, I want you want you to sit to uh, be a, your friend on Facebook or Prince. So yeah, uh, should, yeah so I, I'm going to uh, follow you that. Okay. So, okay. So we'll, we'll, uh, yeah, I think um, 
the crew have sent sent that to you already, so that you can connect with uh, with Thomas after 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 the show. All right then. Yeah, Thomas. Thomas had interest. Let's. Uh, I know we we already started talking about the uh, the, the government. First, before we go to the government, I want to discuss the, the government, you know, because the government, you know, take care of everything. So we, before we do anything, sometimes we want some little government support. But Prince in Ukraine there, has the Liberian culture? What are you eating for food? What are some of, I know there are not many Liberians, but I still, you still think, or uh, you can still congregate. What does yeah. your culture look like? Yeah, basically when we meet together, we cook our, our mortar. Our uh, usual butter, we eat um, butter, but uh, basically, like actually in Ukraine, they they we have average store, but it's very expensive. We don't have many in Ukraine, so basically, we eat our our librarian dish once in a while. Like there was one time I, I ate uh, kidney beans. That was nice. So when we, when we gather together, we 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 usually purchase African things and we share together. Okay, so Af besides Africa, so what are the, the Ukrainian food that you eat? What does it look like? How, how, I don't, I actually find it like Ukrainian dish, because there's a stuff called bosh, it's nice, okay, and I have eaten some other Ukrainian dish, but I'm not a fan of it. I like my African dish. So, so for among your friends, what's their general feelings toward Liberia, you know, the political environment? Is this something that you talk about? Or, uh, you know, do you have parties, connections, or, you know, what the feelings towards the government? What, what the thing? Well, most of the librarians here, they are, they are actually disenchanted in the government because, but, but some of them, we are like, we want to give the government a chance. They just came in, so we got to be patient with them. But most of them, they are like, uh, we are not seeing anything that we expected. There is no plan or action. We don't, we don't see all the promises the government make. And um, most some of them are like, we have to give the government a chance to see how far they will go after the first year. So we all, we, we keep our finger crossed and just look forward to see what the government have in store for us. Okay. What's about you, Francis? How is the uh, political, you know, fever right there? I know we went through a past election where there were people took sides. Now we have a government. How are Liberians feeling towards their government? Well, there's a mix of feelings. Uh, you no, know, so you always have people with mixed feelings, uh, mixed reactions, uh, and um, but generally, uh, you know, we all want to give the government a chance to see how best uh, it it can work on its manifesto, uh, you know, put into actions, and uh, you know, six months uh, into the, into leadership. Uh, so, uh, you know, we have diverse views, uh, you know, people, it's, it's all bordered on party sentiments and on you no know, individualism. I mean, some people have love for, for person we as an individual and others as a sedition, uh, you know, so you, you, you always have come in, you always in, uh, interface or interact with people with diverse views. Uh, so, uh. People will say, I mean, government's not doing anything. I've been there for, you know, for, for so, so short period of time. Uh, for them, it, it's like 10 years. So, uh, you know, so, <laughs> but we all know as mature people, we know what the function of the government, how government, you know, government should be run. And uh, I, I do, I do there's some stuff, basic, basic things that are lacking. And, uh, but uh, as a Liberian, we are all opt optimistic that, uh, mm -hmm. You no, know, we can see our country move forward. That the government can you know, initiate some of its projects. Uh, it has, it has started on some good promises, uh, like the the networking, the road networking. It's important for the you know, for, for our agriculture sector for people to bring the products to the market. Uh, and also, those are things that we we embrace, and I hope that the government will act upon it and put it into to to reality, be manifested. You know, not just words. Right. You know, so I mean, the government has no. So, well, in terms of governments, uh, uh, reaction. I mean, it's diverse. People, you know, good mm -hmm. and bad. Well, I don't want to be politically correct here, so I just want to know, just you know, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that uh, the government will be giving the government um, for me as an individual and as a Labyrinth community? I think we, we have diverse views, and uh, we hope that the government will work on its promises. Okay, get some of the suffering by our people. If you are just joining us, this is Focus on Liberia. We are discussing Liberian communities around the globe. With me, I have Prince Newland from Ukraine, he's a student studying computer science at uh, the university in uh, Tanapoli district. No, not, not Tanapoli. <laughs> I also have Mr. Francis Mensa. He's the president of the Labyrinth Swedish organization right there in Sweden. And we are discussing Labyrinth communities around the world. So uh, uh, Francis, do, you know, are Labyrinths going back and forth from Liberia to Sweden, maybe uh, are Labyrinths going back to Liberia to uh, open businesses, come back? How are they doing on that front? I know a lot of people involved in that. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, on, on most of Liberians are nowhere. Uh, they are all investing in Liberia. They have properties that are bought, no, that, that are properties that are going back home to uh, uh, open businesses. Uh, I'm involved. I have a company that, you know, that do uh, a shipping. Uh, uh, I had two young Liberians who went back home. We shipped uh, 44 containers with, with you no know, goods, and you now to open their own company, their own businesses. So they are doing well. And uh, in terms of going to Liberia, we have had issue with the visa, uh, and we have brought this to the attention of the past administration and to this current administration. Uh, Scandinavia, we need to go to uh, to uh, Belgium to obtain visa. Um, to Germany, who, is a, who has all side responsibility of Scandinavia. And uh, we have uh, Liberians within this border in Scandinavia. I think it would be fair enough. We have, we have, we have engaged with the minister and uh, we have asked him, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, uh, to gave us just the opportunity to have at least a consular here. So it's easier to go to Denmark, easier to come from Denmark to Sweden, Sweden, Norway, it just couple, just one hour you can go and get a visa instead of going to send our passports to Germany or some of us go to um, France or maybe to, uh, to Belgium to have visa. So I think it would be politically, politically correct to have, uh, have a uh, uh, consulate's uh, office in this region because look, Sweden, besides the United States of America, in terms of aid to, to Liberia, Sweden is number two on the list. We have embassies in countries who have not contributed nothing to Liberia, post-war Liberia. Sweden have had Liberians come here to train, use the seed, uh, seed that have invested a lot of uh, 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 money into Liberia to, to empower our people, capacity building, a, a lot of stuff going on. And we cannot have, we cannot have a mission yet. Let me tell you something, I'll tell you this. No, I had a, but before you continue, you said there is no Liberian embassy in Sweden or not even your consulate. Not a consulate in, in Scandinavia. And, so in and Belgium, have, I mean, in, in Norway, Sweden, nothing. and Denmark, nothing. No, so we people, the, 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 we, the, the librarians in this region have, have to go to Germany or send their passport by DHL or whatever it is, you know, return, return mail. So I mean, the risk of, of losing your, 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 your passport or whatever it is, I mean. And so there's nothing as such. And I'll tell you this, I, I had a conversation with all uh, a, 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 no, a, a business guy, yeah, sweet, and you know, somebody in, in the foreign ministry. Yeah, and they told me, look, man, look, this is a two-way street. We have a mission in Liberia. Although we're not granting visa, but we have a mission in Liberia. You think why we send our aid to Zambia or Uganda, other places? You got to have a mission here. We can we can relate to them. They can relate to us you know, at, at a diplomatic level. So what we have, Going to Liberia is just a minute portion of what the people have for countries like Zambia, who has representation, Uganda, and the East African countries. Yeah. Hmm. So I mean, it's important. I will use this opportunity, this forum, to call on the national government to have 
a consulate year. We are appealing to them to have a consulate year. We have had, we have, we have done everything. We have presented these uh, uh, documents, uh, the way forward to help the government in the process. But it's all about political affiliations, all about uh, having my cousin, my brother coming to take out the position, my friend. Look, we need to have a consulate year to have our people represent them, have somebody to go to, that mm -hmm. our people can know. Not to go to Germany, have problems there in Germany, you have to go to Germany. We had a Liberian ambassador in Germany. We have six years we have been fighting ambassadors to Ge from, from a federal Germany who has oversight responsibility also. It's kind of maybe we come to Liberian programs that never. Wow. Harriet Zubaro is saying, the problem we have home and abroad, we don't like to be uncomfortable, but we are willing to walk towards it. Nothing good come easy. Kudos to all whom are trying. So Harriet is getting personal now, Francis. Listen to this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. <laughs> don't be good, I got no way. I know. Yeah, I'm Harriet, our girl, right, yeah. Francis, if you are tapped on the shoulder to serve in Liberia, will you consider? Are you willing to go through the game to, to or are you willing to go through the the great times and, and go back to Libra? You know, Harvey has not become a personal. That's your classmate, so she's attacking you. <laughs> yeah, look, 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 I'm willing to go back to Liberia any day, any time. Look, uh uh, you no, know, we all have families, we have uh you no know, we have gotten ourselves in to this fix comfortable environment, but Liberia is also comfortable. Mm. As I stated earlier, we need to put the mechanics into place, you know, to get back home. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm willing to go back home. A lot of Liberians are willing to go back home to, to, to contribute a quota to, you know, to the, to, to the upbuilding of Liberia. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's no question about that. Mm. Someone says it, uh, Sweden, Sweden is a socialist <laughs> country. That's why we don't have embassy. Is that true? No, I mean, see, probably people are being informed. Uh, you no, know, they do not know the, the difference between socialism and socialist country, a welfare state. Syria is not a social. Syria is not a socialist country. Uh, in uh, in a month time, September 9th, we'll be having a national election. We have we have elections every four years for government. Socialist countries do not have elections. They have people to replace them. And we have, I mean, it's a democratic country. So the, all the virtue of democracy is, is interplayed there. I mean, it, 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 it's been practiced here. We okay. just have a social system that help make the, I mean, the society balance. That way you do not find rich and poor. I mean, the gap is not, it's not so, it's not so widening. Yeah. There's, yeah. No, there's no ghettos in Sweden because the taxes are so high that we pay, we pay I pay like 30% tax on my income. So to make life easier for all people who are le less fortunate in the society. So okay. it is not a socialist country. Socialist countries are countries like I mean, Russia and other places. When you when you have socialism, a social welfare as a bedrock of your of your of your society to enable your people, I mean it's not socialism. It's, it's not a socialist country. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, I know uh, uh, and I uh, Prince. Back in the day, in the 80s, when librarians went to uh, Russia to learn, when they went back, we had some of those ideas. Government was not giving them job because they say they have socialist ideologies. So in Ukraine, too, being a former Soviet Union, do you, have you heard anything about that? Like uh, maybe government may look at people from the Ukraine who got education from the Ukraine some kind of way? Oh, no, not, not for my notice. Uh, no, I don't have any idea because even Ukraine next year will be election in Ukraine. So after, I think after five years, Ukraine goes to, it goes to a vote of vote. So not to my knowledge, I don't have much idea on that. Yeah, because, I, I, you know, sometimes I think about that. I say, well, how senseless can this be? Because even I had a family member who returned to Liberia, got a degree in electrical engineering. He couldn't find job. He was driving taxi. That was, you know, at time, around... 1988, 1989. Can you, can you be, we don't want to, uh, that to happen again, but uh, that's something that happened. And um, as you are in Ukraine, I was thinking that uh, if you had some of those whispers coming around. No, Ladies and gentlemen, if you are just joining us, again, this is focused on Liberia. We are discussing Liberian communities 
around the globe. Tonight, we are with uh, Ukraine and Sweden. From Ukraine, representing the Labyrinth Student Association there is Mr. Prince Newland. And then my uh, former classmate, Mr. Francis Mensa, is uh, the president of the Labyrinth Association in uh, Sweden. He's been there for 10 years. We got a friend, you know, you know he's years. from Maryland County, where mm -hmm. Tottenham came from. Uh, who ruled Labyrinth for 27 years. So I thought he was electing himself over and over, but he said that's not the case. So I feel happy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. What, what are, so what are the, uh, fr first of all, do we have uh, churches in you know, Ukraine, Prince? You have churches there, or do you have Labyrinth churches or mosques? What are some of the worship center people go to? Uh, yeah, Ukrainian, they are Orthodox, uh, Catholic, Orthodox, and there is, a, there is a lot of Orthodox churches here, and there is some other Protestant churches here, um, but there is no Liberian church, yeah. So, so you guys go to any of those worship centers as Liberians or? Yeah, yeah, Liberians, we, you find Liberian mass in some Protestant churches like, uh, um, there are some librarians in another well, church by the name of Sogis, and I, I worship with Christ and Basi. So just all will, like share ourselves, but there is no specific librarian church. What's about you, Francis? Do we have librarian monks, librarian churches, librarian worship centers in that place? No, we don't. Uh, there was an attempt a couple of years ago to have one of uh, a librarian church, but I don't know what happened to that church. Uh, the, I think the pastor, uh, he, he, he moved to the States and uh, I guess he flocks, his followers went to the Nigerian church instead. But uh, we, we were in the pipeline, I was in the pipeline, we were talking with some uh, a group in Texas to come to open our, no, our Labyrinth, you no know, base church in Texas to come and open our a center, yeah, but we stay in it in, in the uh, discussion. Yeah. Uh, but in terms of uh, churches, Liberian, uh, we did they all affiliate with Nigerian churches around here. I'm, I mean, I'm so sorry, but we've got international church, but the pastors are almost with Nigerians and uh, they have one uh, church here that would, uh, I call it was run by an American, yeah, but. In, uh, in essence, uh, there's no Liberian church, uh, but there are a lot of churches in Sweden. Okay. Uh, during the, in, uh, just a brief history in terms of, as it relates to church. Uh, during the 17th and 16th century, Swedes were very poor. They were poor, they were poor in Liberia. But as they found wealth, they believe in God, shall diminish. The more they became richer, the more uh, accomplished, you know, <laughs> they, they believe in God. I mean, you know, the measure, I know, within our time. So there are big, big churches there, uh, abundant. Uh, you don't go, you don't see nobody there in Sweden, uh, you know, on Sundays. Yeah, so the Swedes had to go to church three times in their lifetime, some of them. Mm. When they're born in baptism, they get married and they die and take them to church. What is the airline ticket to go to Liberia round trip from Sweden? Well, it depends on the airline. Uh, the most expensive airline we have uh, is uh, SM Brussels. I mean, uh, it, it costs around, uh, it, it would be like taking top. Swedish Kuno would probably be around uh, maybe $2,000 in change to go to Liberia. Mm -hmm. But there are uh, airlines like. Uh, the newest airline who I'm mean, making impact in the region is uh, KLM Air France, the coordinating, they're going to Liberia. So that's much cheaper. Then Air Morocco from Morocco, that's another cheap airline in terms of, uh, you know, the price mm -hmm. as compared to uh, SM Brussels. Or, or no, we have British Airways before I flew to Liberia on British Airways, which was just about a thousand dollars and change. Yeah, a couple of years ago, six, seven years, five years ago. Basa, you said Liberia does not have embassy in those countries because 
we do not have the resources, period. Financing an embassy is very expensive. You know, Ukraine doesn't have an embassy in Liberia, or we don't have an embassy in Ukraine, and the same with uh, Sweden. Francis, you maybe you work on that before. Do you know how much, what it takes for, to have a consulate right there in, in uh, Stockholm? I mean, I mean the, the thing is that, uh, yeah, I do know uh, we have worked on it. Uh, we have we have a property uh, that was uh, that was owned by Liberian government before it was sold. Uh, it, it was uh, no resold, and then the government brought it back. It got it back again, and, uh, and we had a farm, we had a guy here. Uh, uh, they lit uh, land on. Mr. Mr. Ekman was a council general of Sweden. Uh, you know, he's working in like what they call a Mesbu, like a, a zinc factory on Clara Town, somewhere around there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was a council general then. He passed, you know, so he was in peace. So at that time, that bread just came out of war. It was not 91, 92, up to 2003. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think Mr. Eggman passed away in 2004, five, whatever it is. So uh, running a, a council idea does not require much. According to what we, we did, did, this guy ran the council from his house, from his living room. I mean, I went to Liberia, I, I went to renew my passport around 2004 or three or so that I went to renew my passport. The, the, man, the gentleman told me just to wait and give him a chair in his living room. He went and got that his stem. He sent my passport. I gave him the visa, the visa fee, and that was it. So, what much? How much does it really cost to run an embassy, a consulate there? It's far more cheaper to than to run a full scale embassy. We have people, we have council, we have secretary. We have one of the secretaries that you have at the embassies around the world can come here, you can pay him, and he can live here and, and work and run a consulate. Mm. That, that's a simple idea. Age. So it'll be, I mean, I don't want to say people are naive or poor, there's a lot of, of sheer ignorance that they're talking about uh, or, or the government to not, can I afford it? Government have missions in other countries with, 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 with overstaffed people. Mm -hmm. So those overstaffed, you eat them a cost reduction. You want to reduce costs, cut down some of the forces. I mean, just in the UK, we have secretary for everything in love. And I think the, the, the mission in, in, in the UK, we probably like 13 staff members. So you want to reduce costs, when you call one of the, one, or cut, cut a job, one of the secretaries down and, 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 and they'll bring the money here yeah, and probably bring that person here yeah, and you know, give him the same wage, the same, 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 same uh, salary that he, he's, uh, maybe he's, he's, he's earning in the, in the UK and, and, and serve that and, and, and do that the work here. Yeah. Right. And, and and besides that, everything is a cost benefit analysis. Exactly. So if you if you have one guy in Sweden in Stockholm, for instance, what does Liberians tend to benefit from that? You know, then that can warrant how much you, you spend on that office. As you said, somebody uh, a Swedish telling you, hey, if we have a mission in Liberia, we are able to do XYZ to get them documented in writing, do that same cost benefit analysis and what you, because I had the same story when I in the United it's very difficult to get that person that the ambassador here to visit Canada or let alone set up a little Council that, that uh, most of these. So maybe you need to do a, a little portfolio to present to the government besides talking. Look, uh, Dennis, look, we have done everything. Uh, we have sent our, our detailed expenditure in terms of costs, how much the government will be saving, what are the benefits associated with having. Uh, and a council it here. So, uh, I mean, we, I, I, mean I, I can tell you that we have done everything we have exhausted. And we have, 
all the avenues. And I mean, it just fell, it just fell on deaf ears. So, but uh, we stay optimistic. I mean, that uh, our, our people, librarians residing in this kind of neighborhood, can have a consulate here so that they, they have issues. It's not about just not just about visas, about issues about security, issue about uh, uh, family. Look. I serve as president of the Liberian community. Yeah. Uh, people who have immigration problems, they come to me. Yeah, they contact me. Look, look, I'm just a local president. I have, I'm not representing, I'm not representing the government. So why can't you go to a, a bond? They said, no, Mr. Menza, we do not, we can't go to, can you help us? You know what I'm saying? Look, so the government need to bring somebody here. It's kind of maybe I need to kind of kind is 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 almost important apartment that we have somebody representing the government here in this kind of area, wherever it is in Denmark, Norway, or Sweden. I mean, we need a representation. Okay, I know all my man Wilton Kata just joined, so he's asking, what is the estimate of Liberians in both Ukraine and um, and Sweden? So let me start with you, Prince. Give us the estimate again. Of uh, librarians um, in Ukraine, and mainly you say they are students. Yeah, they are students. Uh, as I said earlier, um, at least around 100. Okay, and most of them are students. And we learned, uh, Wilton, school there is cheap. For 3,000, you can become a doctor in for, for one year. <laughs> no, you can go to school for one year as a doctor or as a in dentistry, is a little over 3,000. MD is just around 3,000. So that's. Yeah. 2,600. Engineer, you by less than 3,000, you can study for four for a year to be, you know, in the engineering department. So, uh, what, what's about you, or uh, uh, Francis? What's the total librarian estimate in your in your country? Well, uh, I will speak off the record because we do not have, I don't know, statistics on them. Uh, but uh, I think. In, we had a neighborhood around two to three thousand uh, librarians. I'll tell you a story, interesting story. It was a point in time, uh, no, I sent out uh, a communique information around to the community. You know, I published it on, you know, on our website, trying to have data on people, and uh, it was misconstrued. But these are the kind of questions people ask you how many, you know, you, can, you know, people are like, oh no. You know, the information we have, people want to use it for you no know, other purpose. Not our people always have second thoughts. They always know. Yeah, that's so because mentor. Because we need, I mean, as a community, you need to know your strength, you know, you know how many, how many persons are there. And uh, there was a serious issue in the community. Certain people were like, we want to use it to make money on librarian people and this and you know, all kinds of stories. I was there soon. For the record, I mean, no, unofficially, I think we have just around two to three thousand or even more. Right. All right. Gentlemen, it's been a, a wonderful time, you know, discussing, getting to know, you know, Liberian community in this area. We are hoping that uh, other people watching the show will kind of connect and uh, we're willing to focus on Liberia to play that role in uniting all Liberians and uh, People even wanted to get touch in touch with you, you know, asking us if the need be. So before we uh we round up, I just want your final thoughts. Let me start with you, Prince from uh, Ukraine. Um, I will I will I would like to encourage every librarian out there. Ukraine is a good place to study, and I believe that a librarian need us if we come and study. And I would like to encourage all of my friends who also may be watching that are in Ukraine. I would like to urge them that if you don't know school yet, you have to go back and help Liberia because no one can make Liberia like Ukraine except ourselves. And that's so far so good, that's all. All right, and we want to thank you so much for your time. Extend our greetings to your fellow compatriots right there in Ukraine. All right. Francis, so your final thoughts. Well, I just want to thank you for this opportunity, this platform for on Earth and librarian uh, organizations around the world. Uh, it's a good initiative. Uh, 
We hope that you do not stop. You continue to fish our labyrinths. We have in Europe, we have the labyrinth, uh, uh, European Federation Labyrinth Association, EFLA, is a model organization of all labyrinth associations in Europe. We have a young gentleman in Holland, uh, Mr. Nicholas Doe, uh, who, who, who has who had the labyrinth committee in the, uh, Holland. So I uh, have no other labyrinth communities around Europe. So uh, uh, the interesting thing, we have Fidel, who's from the UK. I mean, so uh, again, I just want to thank you all. And I want to use this medium to encourage our friends, our partners to go to Liberia and help us uh, build Liberia because uh, it's nowhere like home. Uh, no, we we are we found our we found ourselves in this uh, in the diaspora, and uh, uh, we cannot call this home because uh, no, our hearts and minds and so so are all no longer going to be back in Liberia. So on this note, I just want to thank you again for the opportunity to call me, and uh, I wish you all the best in your future endeavors. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Uh, we want to thank you so much for being part of this program. Liberia is the only country we have, and it takes us to make it better. And they are, you know, one uh, educator guy said, whatever you focus on will grow. So if we can choose to focus on the challenges facing the country, those challenges will grow, of course. If we choose to focus on our strength or what we can do better, to put our country on the platform and make it what we all intended to be, definitely we can achieve that. And I believe that with all my heart. So let's encourage Liberians everywhere to work hard and then we all go back home one day so as to contribute our quota. I know it's not gonna be easy when you go back. Sometimes the political will is not there, but uh, if we have like minds, if what people are thinking in Sweden is the same thing people are thinking in the UK, in Ukraine, in America, in Canada, we can all go back and make that positive impact. And uh, I want to really thank you guys for coming. Let's keep in touch and uh, let's see what we all can do together to move our country forward. I want to thank to uh, all our viewers on Facebook Live and uh, those who are watching on YouTube and who are listening to us on the phone. We want to thank you so much for watching. Uh, Francis, one final message from Harriet to you is a uh, class reunion is next year in Charlotte. So she want me to tell you. So I want to say again, thank you guys for coming. We are uh, next year, next week, next week, we're going to continue on the series. I think uh, we having uh, the two countries that we haven't on. I think it's that or uh, it should be Japan, uh, but uh, we have some countries in the pipeline. It may not be Japan, I'm, I think, but we have Japan coming, we have Australia, we have Germany, we have all these countries lined up and we'll be coming to you. Every, for this week, our series continue on, on our Labyrinth communities. August 24, Flag Day, we're gonna have a special on the flag. And we have a professor who's coming to talk to us about the role of the flag, the history, and all that. Please share the video and uh, let's keep in touch. Thanks again for coming. Good night and God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. It's 2 a.m. in the morning. I could work tomorrow, my man. <laughs>